This is my craftsman table saw. I have it in my basement. Too much dust. Look at this cat. Okay, we're gonna make a cover for this saw. Uh, it's got a cast iron base that I want to just extract the dust right off of. We're gonna make a template out of paper. Use a magnet to hold it on. We've got it nice and tight in there so it fits right in. Now we got some 26 gauge galvanized sheet metal. You can get that at the local home improvement store or from the metal yard. It's a lot cheaper if you can buy a big sheet, but you can also buy a two by two foot piece. I got a little vice grip style clampy tool from Tractor Supply. That thing works nice for bending sheet metal. Using my $20 auto body set to fold that seam over. We're going to fold both sides, make it nice and rigid, give it some strength, and also make it a little easier to handle. It won't be sharp in case we remove it. Putting a fold on it so that it fits around the bottom, and we'll be able to mount it Just using different techniques there's lots of ways to do lots of ways to accomplish a fold on thin sheet metal have it come out looking pretty decent quick and it fits in there pretty well it holds itself in maybe I got lucky I don't know you got a little bit of give there's one spot there that is causing a clearance issue just trim that fold it up Get off the sharp edges so nobody gets hurt. Now it fits pretty tightly. I put that little clamp on there um, with a nice round head screw for a reference point, and now I know where to drill a hole for mounting. I'm using my little scribey tool, but you could just measure an inch off with a straight edge or do it various ways. Fold it up nice. There we go fits in there. Now I got this old rigid vacuum cleaner attachment. So marking out where the hole will be cut in order to get the dust through. Center it up, make it nice and round and smooth. Put a pilot hole on each of those. And then finish them off with a stepper bit. Works well with the thin metal. We got a jigsaw with a metal blade on it to finish out the cutout. Now this piece of wood will enable us to uniformly bend the metal into the shape of the vacuum cleaner attachment. We made the whole oversized that's what the outside line is so that there will be room for the attachment to sit inside of the metal center it up these little self-tapping metal screws to hold it on there
It's my garden. It's coming in early July in Connecticut. We got lots of shallots maturing. Kale is starting to grow nicely and some cucumbers. This is my old stump. Sometimes I come outside and work on that if I'm hammering on things. It's nice to have. Now I'm just using a little body hammer to work the metal out so we can get the vacuum cleaner attachment to sit in there. Go slowly, a little bit here, see how it fits, try and work that in there. The hole in the middle that just happens to be there in the rotting wood is actually very useful for this. Um, now we got it pretty close. Doesn't take a long time. Clean it up a little bit more. This looks intimidating, or it was actually for me. I have a little bit of experience with this, but it's fun to do. It's fun to learn. You got nothing to lose. Here we go, it sits flat on the bench now, which is good. Just kind of clean it up a little bit, try to smooth it out, make it somewhat presentable. There we go. Fits pretty nice, not a lot of air leaking around that when the vacuum will be on. Now, Checking if it's flush. Now we gotta get a piece in there to hold the thing in. Another scrap of this metal I had from another project. Check if it fits. Another way to bend your metal just over a straight edge. Now I'm trying to center this up. I want the hole to be big enough so that it does not overlap, but I don't want it so big so that it's hard to form. Same as before, cut it out. Had to do it twice because the first one was too big. Second time's the charm. These are the rivets I'm using. 3 16 diameter. They're much too big. You could use eighth by quarter inch. These are too long, as you will see later on. I had to clean them up. Uh, you wanna Drill these as you go to make sure that they all fit nicely together. Cleaning up the sharp edges with a file. It only takes a couple minutes and it gives you a nice finish. Now I am centering the vacuum attachment in order to line up the cover. Little tape is useful. And mark it out. Making another buck here to raise the metal on this piece. This piece of wood was really too small. I should have used a bigger one, but it worked. Screw it into place. There wasn't enough room to even get all those screws on, so I ended up clamping it. Which was kind of a pain, but I actually cut this piece of wood out for the first one and then realized it was too small. The hole was the same size diameter as the vacuum attachment on this one. 
and on the first buck it was the quarter inch wider which allows the attachment to fit in between the two pieces of metal here I'm just drilling a reference and filing out um, slits in the corners of these in order to make this a little bit easier to form around the buck. It doesn't need to be as strong as the main body. Just holding the vacuum cleaner into place. Back out to the stump. Using this little plastic hammer this time, getting a little help from my buddy. Just work around the buck nice and evenly. You can go a little bit farther than you need to. It's pretty close. If you work it a little bit more than you need to, it's going to be easy to get it back to where you need it to be. That's probably not always true, but on this application it was. Now it's relatively close, just tightening up the shape a little bit. Now, yeah, just that corner was hard to define. Trying to knock that in there, work that in there. I really like these little pliers. They were like $6 at Tractor Supply. Work it around. So I'm saying you kind of get the hard line with the buck and then sort of fold the top edges back around and it worked out pretty well. fits in there nicely try and get it as close as possible without going too crazy and it's flush that thing sandwiched in there now lining the rivets up go around drill as you get a rivet in and then re-drill it Get another rivet. These are called pop rivets. As they go pop. So I'm just cleaning up some loose, loose uh, metal from the drill bit. Work them around, get them all in. That ended up going back into that spot that was interfering, so that, and that's actually going to lock that into place. The vise is nice to squeeze the sheet metal together so it's nice and tight when you drill through and rivet through. It lines up well. Two more rivets to hold that back flange on. and. Make it real solid. This is just a railroad spike with a end cut off. I drilled a pilot hole with an eighth inch drill bit and then stuck a countersink drill bit in like a quarter inch. And now it finishes the rivets into a nice uniform shape because they were too big. makes the piece look a lot more finished and the ugly rivets sticking out
and I use this railroad spike. I just cleaned the end up, smoothed it out a little bit, and then it's kind of like a chasing tool just to to find the edges a little bit and tighten it up. And one of those rivets was too close to the seam, so this made it look a little more professional. It's back on the saw. Fits pretty nice. Doesn't hit the blade. I was checking the clearance. And it fits there. You do have to remove this to cut at a 45 degree or a steep angle with the saw. Just doing the old smoke test. Now I had it mounted on the little conduit hanger and it was creating an air gap, which I did not like. So I ended up drilling and tapping a hole where that mount was and just screwing it in. I used an M6 bolt because I had a metric tap and a bolt, but you could use a quarter by 20 inch one. It's very easy to drill and tap cast iron. It's nice and snug. You gotta make sure the vacuum's on if you're using this, otherwise it's gonna get packed with sawdust and cause a problem. Here we go, let's test it out. We got some sawdust up top, which I think is unavoidable. But down here, we got almost nothing. I think anything is just coming from the top. Ripping some pallet wood, getting ready for the next project. Thank you for watching.